Yanis is a world-renowned password cracking expert and a member of Team Hashcat. And this is I have the Hashcat, so I make the rules. And also, just for the production of this presentation, only one kind of Um, again, my name is Khan and uh, uh, positive Pakistan as well. Um, what else did I do? Yeah, uh, done good from my technique aspect that I, I cracked that password. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I think I think I did actually. And uh, the article was the had a Bible and you could hear in the next frontier and password cracking. So um, actually that uh, that passphrase was in, a, in Wikipedia. It wasn't, I didn't brute force it, I didn't do anything. It just took a couple of seconds from a word list from Wikipedia. So anyway, that was it. Yes, it was. Uh, 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 exactly. Yeah. Except, uh, except the one. So the one was the rule. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I also, I'll, yeah, I was also interviewed by um, on BBC on um, uh, BBC News Technology. So, just, so um, let's start with the corporate definition. So for the puzzle cracking, the problem is um, uh, cracking the last, let's say, ten, fifteen. Uh, percent of, uh, of the puzzles of a hash list. So, um, and, and that's, that's, that's the actual problem. Um, I'm going to go through and also every time I'll just reiterate to that, uh, you know, the, uh, the agenda, the small agenda that we've got. So, the puzzle cracking attempt is successful if it cracks 92% or more of, uh, of puzzles every time. So, you, you have to really come up with new techniques or methodology just to go and, and just push your puzzle cracking into that level. Also, something I didn't mention, I'm also Greek, so um, and I, when I get too excited, I just I might switch language. So if, if it's something that you don't understand in Greek, so just 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 interrupt me and let me know. So um, let's ju just put um, a place where, where we are. So you already tried to brute for some uh, some hash, hashes from that hash list. You already tried your all your word list. You tried your... Um, uh, Let's say your your private or your public word list that you've got, um, and then you reach let's say to eighty five to ninety percent of hash list, and you need to crack the rest of them. Why? Because you actually need to. I mean, there is no no point. But just to, you ha you can just push it further down, and um, and you're stuck with nothing else to do actually, and you're stuck to that. And um, instead of just leaving it there to ninety percent, it just put to a bit better percentages. So. Let's t try to solve this problem. For the puzzle crack, is a problem. For the rest of them, I don't know what that is. But anyway, that's a problem. So my five cents for today is like um, I use Hashcat. It's an awesome it's a CPU, GPU-based puzzle cracking tool, and um, and it has an active unit as well. Um, also, I make my own rules and I constantly improve them. I make my own word list and I constantly improve them. Which that, that this is what a puzzle crack should do actually. And I use and contribute towards the creation of hash utils or any techniques or any additional rules. Uh, I don't know if anyone has seen my, my rules on uh, new releases of Hashcat. And uh, in today's presentation, I said the usage of a new tool called TMSEs. And, um, and I'll show how that combined with existing techniques and existing tools that are on the hash list, how, how we can um, be able to crack more passwords. So, just a small Hashcat overview of what the versions we are. So Hashcat CPU is 0 0.47. Um, Hashcat GPU on, on, on NVIDIA or ATI, it's 1.21. Hashcat Utils, 1.0. Uh, mass processor and stats processor. Is, is anyone familiar with the rest of uh, mass processors or the tools? Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's good. 
And um, in the attack mode, so Fedorisial has cat. So um, got brute force attack, combinator attacks, uh, dictionary, fingerprint, and hybrid attacks, and so on. J just just the modes that the, the hashcat has built in. And in hashcat utils, it's going to be the TMSs and also the rest of the tools that um, I'm going to explain today. I'm sorry, I'm, I forgot to mention that's item, the, the code dev. That, that's the and feels uh, and it was it's the um, they're the two core developers of Hashcat. I just wanted to mention that. So we are here. They start with advanced word list generation. So there are many tools. I mean, when we try to do puzzle cracking, I, I, I omitted most of them. I'm just going to present some of the say, new ones, the one I used, and, and um, let's see how that goes. So we can create. Let's start with word list generation. You can create word lists out of everything. Like for every website you go. From online Bible, you can go and see poems. You can see, um, you know, movie scripts. So, so everything you can make a word list out of everything, and that's the main reason that I cut that big password that I showed at the beginning on the first slide. So, um, but the the most successful word list that you're going to have is, of course, from previously cracked passwords. And if you have a big collection of them, then you have a really really good dictionary. Um, Hashes to door the website they do really uh, contribute into creating one of these uh, word lists, but I think every password cracking has their own private as well for all the passwords that they crack. Also, Wikipedia offers free copies of all the uh, of the content that exists on Wikipedia in 283 languages. So then, you, you actually we actually have the Unicode part of, the, of password. So uh, Greek letters, we don't have any type of letters. So you have word list also on all these languages, and also our C logs. So Ubuntu has a really really good source. We'll see later on on, on screenshot. And Pacebin's post as well. So uh, if somebody's scraping Pacebin for fun and profit or something, then uh, you can actually see that um, Pacebin, uh, sorry, Archive.org started archiving the Pacebin post since 2013. So we no longer have to just attack the Pacebin all the time or use Torso. So I don't know what people are using. So uh, just, just to scrape Pacebin. So you, you'll, we'll see later on how that goes. So the, the the quicker way of doing it is just replace space with a new line and then sort them. You can create word lists out of anything. So you have a list of words and then the separated value with the space. But then I think uh, CoreLogic did a really good job in cracking the account 2012 and forced this atom just to write some small scripts to create uh, small phrases, of like one word, two words, three words. Uh, and that's a, a nice script that I think you, you can find on. Uh, uh, let me see if that works. Oh, cool. Nice. So there's the link there with all the competitions. So Fraser will just get a, uh, uh, the input will be a, let's say, a list of or an article or something. We'll just cut small words out of it. We'll see later on how that works. So that's the Wikipedia. You can go there and just actually, um, you know, download all these all the database in different languages. Those are the RC logs. So you can go to RC log Ubuntu since 2004 and start downloading the uh, scraping the whole text and then. Use Fraser, for example, just to start cutting words. Or on archive.org, you go in and download the paste bin paste. I mean, it's there. Uh, we no longer have to you know, crawl and scrape paste bin. So we use that. We create our own rules. But what do we actually find out about using that? So uh, the first thing is like people actually love passphrases. And I really, that's, that's a really, really good point. Just uh, so I've seen. Um, I lost the previous presentation about the passphrases, but I, I'm sure it's equally like um, the, the approaches for passphrases. I think for every password crack, it will be uh, quite similar. And people actually use their passwords. Everybody knows that. Um, someone's username, someone's password. I think Dioxide mentioned that one day in IFC. I really agree with that. And people are more resourceful with passphrases and often make them personal, which is, well, that's. I guess that's the puzzle crack has something. So you can get more information out of that passphrase rather than that single word. So it hides more information. And of course, something completely separate to that. The source of hashes from a single hash list becomes obvious once you start cracking the first couple of passwords. So if you have a hash list and that hash list came from a single source, then you'll find it because the root words will just yell the location where that hash list came from. A good example is LinkedIn and the rest of it. We're going to have some slides later on. So um, some sample, you know, uh, passphrases. So, so those are actual passwords. Some, some we recognize the masking at the beginning where that password came from. No? That masking, the zeros, the beginning, and the hash. 
Uh, yes, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm password protected. So that's a good password, actually. Yeah. And complex. It's complex. And look at my horse. My horse is amazing. And this is not my admin login. Those are actual passwords. That they're gone. Anyway. And just to be more fun with it. So those are my favorite puzzles that I found them somewhere. Um, OK, you can still see the, uh, the masking there. And I, I'm just collecting them just for the, as a hobby, I guess. And um, for those that they think that the life of a puzzle cracker is really easy, imagine waking up in the morning and you see these passwords. It, it really, it could actually dramatize you for a lifetime, really. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, uh, like this one, seriously. It's like, come on. <laughs> I, I don't know. So, uh, so imagine waking in the morning and say, let's see how our cracking rig goes. And you say, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> and then you just, you know, go. Ahead. Oh, yeah. So, passphrases or whatever techniques that people use for, for their passwords. Um, uh, the first one, actually, I then found out that it's actually a, a, a name of a song of Latin. So, yeah, all right. I didn't know that. So, when you don't really know that, it's a, you know, Actual title of a song, that it, uh, it makes the same more difference, I guess. So anyway, uh, moving on to that. Yeah, yeah. We're, let's just create some rules with uh, with the message. I'll just explain what that is. So why 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 rules? Why why just you know focus on rules? Uh, people, everyone has rules in their passwords because of the password policies that we force to them. So you can actually see um, a space is considered a special character. So on the, on the first example, you'll see that um, that will actually meet most of the password policies. It's a special character in a lowercase, and you're fine with it. You can actually use it. But then people, um, you just remove um, the, the, the space in the middle, and they just create a word list, uh, you know, a, a password like this, X password or something. Or they just do lead text, or they'll have smiley faces, or whatever. So so people are really, uh, really good at coming up with techniques to mutate their passwords. And let's start with the first tool that was publicly available anyway for a while now and, and, and see how we're able to improve it. So more, what is a tool that comes in, in hashtag utils? And you'll get a, um, so you start attracting some puzzles for a new list and you have some samples to work on. Taking those samples into consideration, then, then uh, Morph will just start reading them and will create insert rules based on the, on the positions that the, the you know keywords that are mutated for this example one two three will actually appear in position um, you know starting from, from visual zero to um, zero one two three so one two three just to append and um, Morph will create insert rules just for those positions and the I mean the the result of it then you use those rules and you come up with a, a new a more passwords which it really really worked really really good because you. You have some statistics and you see how people actually maintain the passwords. Um, the limitation of Morph was like, you had the limitation of three characters, so it was zero to three characters that were adjacent. There's a new version now, uh, Morph uh, in, in turn, that will extend that like in four or five characters. So there's no limitation on that. But you can actually see it in hashtag utils. That's something that was, was out there for a while. So I just, um, I wanted to, uh, to explain it. So let's talk about team essays, the main reason for today. So how, how does team essays work? So team essays will create rules that it sends contents of one word list into all positions of another word list. The input word list source can be anything. So it could be numbers, it could be dates, it could be special characters. So that would be insert rules for the position. And that's a really, really good example. So the team essays will create insert rules that if, the, if our uh, input is password, then we'll actually insert it from position zero into posi position seven, and we'll mutate any word that is um, that, that that will actually uh, will be our let's say word puzzle candidate. So those will be our, our those would be our puzzle candidate words. Um, let's see more examples of uh, um, <coughs> sorry of of messages. So. Those were some 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 part, some um, some lists that they became public domain a couple of around uh, the last two or three years ago. So and um, and all these the, the the most common stuff that all these lists had is when you started tracking some passwords and did some analysis on them. Then um, 
then the root words were yelling the source over. So, for example, the, the linked thing would actually have as a root word the linked thing, and uh, or, or link or linked Alex or Mike. That's really really common. And uh, you know, LastFM, uh, Maga Trader, Silver Club. So those are actually websites I got hacked and all the hashes went out. But when you started doing the password analysis on on even the first ten or fifteen percent of, of passwords, then those words would actually yell out. Um, what I've done, what I've actually done, is just remove every digit and every symbol, um, and I, I, I sort them by occurrences, so how many times they, they, they appeared in there. And also, I just remove the, the, the second example, I just remove all the letters, and I wanted to see how many, um, yeah, what were the mutations on those root words that they appear there. The idea is, for, for TMS is to use those root words as an input word list and see how that works. So, but even before that, then you've got a really, really good sample of, you know, uh, running some combination attacks. So we've got some really plain alpha uh, root words and some mutations. So if you actually combine them, then you start cracking puzzles like, um, you know, the root word some plus something or the root, or if you have some word list there, and then that actually started making sense because if people are actually using the, the word of that um, source that came out, then it will appear on their passwords. So moving forward with that, with TMSS, if you have the, the um, if you just collect the root words from there, then you can start. Uh, you have these rules on all these top uh, um, on all these uh, root words that you're going to use. And by generating rules by that, then the result will be, um, uh, for example, tripod with inserter LinkedIn or position three. And that will give you, really, when you're close to 90%, every puzzle matters. But if it, if it gives you two or 3% on that stage, that means that your attack was really, really successful. And, um, and th this is what, even if it's a simple approach to take around uh, puzzle cracking, at this stage, at 90%, when you start cracking puzzles, that means the approach to take is really, really good. So um, that actually worked. And um, so so then you, you start extending that. What, what are you going to use for these root words? So at the, at, the, at the position of that word list, let's see what, what else can you use. So let's just expand these attacks. Um, on a later stage, I went and I, you know, I downloaded lots and lots of PDFs that are uh, free and probably available. I, I mean, I hope. Well, they're PDFs anyway, and um, and I converted them that they had English literature. So I, I wanted to to have some sort of a good sample of what, how things were going on. Um, really, th those were the most, you know, books that I ever grabbed. Uh, so um, so having uh, having all these books, then I just convert them into text, and I put them in a script called um, count words. So. Count words, so that script will actually calculate how many times a specific word pair will appear. And I came up with statistics. I said, okay, um, of the, for example, appear so many times, that means that, you know, it shows somebody on, 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 on passphrases, especially, it's really, um, it, it's, it will be a key word on that. And also on three word pair, then we've got one of the to use the, uh, it appears so many times. So I wanted to use that as my, um, as my word list for TMSs to create insert rules. To insert too many positions. Um, the first attack, though, was just just to see the, how the combinator works. So I knew the first part. I knew that statistically wise that the that the of the either with space or without, then I was a first a, a good candidate for, a, for the first part of the word. And then I've done combinator attacks. So I started tracking those puzzles, which are fairly, you know, fairly okay. I mean, I don't really use a strong puzzle to be honest. Well, <laughs> compared to that, I, I do, but. So th those are considered good passwords. So people use those passwords actually, and um, and with, with also the uh, those are the two words, and also with three words, we started tracking more passwords, like oh, which is which was fair, which was was quite good. But then with TMSs, then you've got those specific um, word pairs to be inserted in different locations. So. That actually worked. It gave me more passwords. It gave me more lengthy passwords when when the attack was there, and um, and I thought, yeah, okay, let's just we could just extend that in a bit. So 
in order to put that attack into, let's say, uh, on steroids, then you've got combinator attacks and you've got insert attacks. So a combinator attack will just take the, the word, the word of the, on the left hand side with the word on the right hand side, which is fine. Hashka doesn't support the whole attack, but it supports standard input. So I could run combinator, standard input into Hashcat, and then rules. So my rules were, um, but then it, it does also accept um, rules left and rules right, or just a combination of rules. So in the first example, um, the rules got these two, well, let's just say, so combining those, and then you've got man a real highlight, and then you've got the key message, and insert highlight here, and one key way that you will put the other down highlight, which is fair in all locations. Those words, individually, they could exist as a part of the But as an attack, they actually produce as much value as possible. Put a much more value. So that we make it, there is no way to do it. There is no way to run it at high time. But the, 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 the combination of the attack actually works and it's good. Now, same thing with this one. They combine those two, inserting basic words as rules, then insert this rule, for example, insert this ABCD one from your disposition, and insert two from my own disposition as well. Then actually gain a really, really strong password. And those are more basic. And so you put them the same word. Produce a really, really strong puzzle. How considerable the puzzle is probably not the one that I mentioned at the beginning, but it was a few characters. So it's that one up here where I'm working. But those puzzles, you will never have them working unless they're linked somehow. Or they were just, you know, somebody linked them or whatever, then they were actually linked and they were working. So that's, this is what makes the message so powerful. So the combination of the messages with the rest of the tools for Hashka is still. So the last part is like the more milder version of it, um, but I, I think there's a lot of work that we can have. So all we talk about engrams. So engrams is like the creation of engrams, like um, the analysis of issues of this. And then we can actually see um, the, the rules of this part. And the um, Marco can actually give us the password part of that part. It's also a word by the capital name. Um, so starting with ten drums, then you've got um, uh, I run some analysis on those two and I saw that the yen would appear so many times, so that's this you know set of sentences that you can come up together. As well as string drums which M A R would appear so many times and whatever. So I'll take all these pairs and I'll put them in this is because I don't my my work.